as beginner programmers, the the biggest question or the most common question that I get from students is, I don't know where to start. How do I start, Mr. Lane? I just don't know where to go from here. You've given me a problem. What do I do? Well, this is to be expected because you're just learning on the whole process. What you need to realize is that um, we're going to follow the same process that a computer does. As we've said before, a computer really only has four basic operations. Input, processing, storage, and output. Our programs are going to follow the exact same process in order. It's going to follow the same sequence. Input, processing, storage, and output. Most of our programs are going to follow this. Sometimes they'll follow it multiple times within the same program. That's good. It helps keep our logic clean and organized. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to figure out a way to design our programs in a general form um, so they're language independent, which means if you were to hand that design off to somebody programming in another language, they should still be able to follow what you're doing. That also implies that you shouldn't be putting language specific things in there. So for example, you wouldn't talk about getting input from text boxes, you would just talk about getting input. And then it'd be up to the programmer to figure out, well, what is the best strategy in the language that that programmer is using? Would it be uh, from a console, read line command, or would it be something else completely? It might actually be a text box as well. It's a really irrelevant. The whole point is that the design needs to be general in nature. So, um, and what that means is it's general in terms of uh, its strategy, and then it's up to the programmer to implement that strategy and translate it into their own language. Now, we're going to simplify this a little bit. So, input processing, storage, and output. The thing is, is that these two here are often grouped together anyway. So what we end up with is input processing slash storage and then output. And oftentimes we'll just shorten this acronym down to IPO. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this acronym of IPO um, and we're going to create something called an IPO chart. Which, helped us, which will help us organize our thoughts and the commands. Once we have this IPO chart created, it's just a matter of following the chart and putting your code on into the program. So let's clear the page here and take a look of what how this actually looks. So an IPO chart, we'll break it up as input, processing, and then output. Now we know that processing and storage are actually together, but that's um, just for cleanliness, we're just gonna keep it separate. So, what goes in each column? That is the question. It's fairly straightforward. We're gonna look at the input and the output columns first because they're the simplest. In the input column, what I need to see is, show me which variables are gonna be needed for user input. So what that means, so anything that you're going to be retrieving from the user. So um, variables retrieved, or sorry, variables uh, to be used to store user input. Hence the column term, input. A second thing that we like to put in here as well is um, if it exists, uh, known values, so constant values. So we're going to describe um, known, known, pardon me, known values to be stored. In many other languages, they'll be called constants. Um, JavaScript doesn't really deal with that too much. Um, a constant is just a variable whose value doesn't change. I know it seems awkward. How, do, how can it be variable when it doesn't change? It's just a, a subtype of a variable. It's just like an alias, a nickname to give the number meaning. We talked about this before. We don't want any magic numbers in our program. And in order to avoid this, we use variables that have names. Sometimes those variables have values that will never change. Something like pi or the acceleration due to gravity, as long as we're on Earth, that is. Um, Anyway, so these are the only two things I should ever see in input. So if I had an example, let's say for example I was getting the user's name. I might have I might write something like this inside this column. Example, I might say um, username.
And then after that, I'd put a bracket which represented what data type am I going to be using? Not a number, sorry. Let's cross that out. Let's erase that. You're going to be using text or a string. Let's just write string. So that's our example for the input column. Let's jump over to the output column, for example. For the output column, what I want to see is a description. So describe the exact. I want the exact text um, or other form of output, that is, because it might be an image or something like that, or other or sound. of output that is to be shown to the user. It's feedback, essentially. Now, what I recommend doing is use quotes and concatenation. Concatenation. So again, if we had an example, we might see something like display your name is plus and then username. Ideally, these would be on the same line, but I'm running out of space on this on this window here. So you, your name is plus username all on the same little line here. So that's input and that's output. So far, not too bad. Processing is where all the hard work comes in. So this is where I need to see everything that's going to happen, all the processing that's going to occur in the entire program. The first thing I should see is a point about retrieving the data, if there is data to be retrieved from the user, that is. So for example, retrieve any input from the user. I don't have a lot of space here for examples to write, so I'm just going to talk about it. Um, so for an example, um, if I was doing a program that was calculating the area of a rectangle, my input was the dimensions of the rectangle, I would say retrieve the rectangle dimensions from the user. I don't need to say retrieve the length from the user, retrieve the width from the user. Group it together, make it simple and organized, so, um, but it's got to be clear. The dimensions of a rectangle are obvious, everybody should know this by this point. So once you've um, retrieved any input from the user, you should also describe oops, slash define any variables that will be calculated. Any variables calculated by processing. So that might be, in the previous example we were just discussing, that might be the area variable, which would be a number type, not a string type. Um, so describe what data processing is. So the next thing I want you to talk about is like what other forms of processing actually need to occur. So this there might be many points for this. So just, pardon me, describe all other data processing. Use some equations if necessary. Use equations if necessary. Pardon my handwriting, this is awful. Um, so this may include things like input requests for retrieval, which we already talked about, um, calculations, um, or any other actions that may be required. You should have one bullet point per processing command. So what you see here is everything to do with uh, our IPO chart. Left side, we have our variables that are going to be used for input. We have any known values um, on the output. We have a description using the exact text that we'll see, like down here with the example, display, your name is user, plus username. So we have our concatenation and we have our actual text there. The processing, um, start off by retrieving any input from the user. 
then describe any uh, variables that are going to be required for calculation purposes that obviously were not um, not uh, mentioned in the input section and then finally the rest of the steps involved there may be zero they may be 200 million um, obviously you would not do 200 million you wouldn't be using an IPO chart for that but um, the point is it could be any number of them. so that is our IPO chart and if we were to do an example of it let's just kind of clear this out a little bit let's say we were going to create a program that would calculate um, the let's say the area of a circle given a radius given by the user so we have our input not the yeah the area of a circle sorry. input processing and our output now doing the area of a circle we know the formula for the area for a circle is uh, pi r squared okay which implies uh, we need to know what pi is, we need to know the radius, and that's all the information we need. The radius is going to be retrieved for the user. So I might say radius, which is going to be a number. The next thing I'm going to need is pi. Now pi is a known value. So I can write, I'm just going to write in pi, and beside it, it's obviously a number, but I'm going to say, I'm just going to specify the value pi is equal to 3.14159 obviously there's a lot more digits but we're just going to keep it simple right now um, and obviously this is a number now if I had any more uh, variables that needed I just keep listing them out my final output is calculating the area or sorry is displaying the area calculated so I can say display the area of the Pardon my, normally I would just keep going here, of the circle is, close my quotes, and I'm going to add on area. Now, I don't actually have this variable created yet. It's going to need to occur in the processing section. But my input and my output columns are done now. What do I need to do first in my processing? I need to retrieve any user input. So in this case, sorry, I should have bullet points beside each thing so I know the differences. I want to retrieve... the radius of the circle from the user. Oh my goodness. There we go. Retrieve the radius of the circle from the user. Now, once we have that radius, we need to calculate stuff. Before we calculate stuff, we need to have a place to store it. So that brings us to the second part, which is describing variables calculated by processing. So in this case, our area is going to be calculated, and it's going to be a number. Now the next piece of the puzzle, and finally, is any processing that needs to occur. In this case, I'm going to say calculate area as um, area equals pi multiplied by radius squared. Now, of course, we can't actually write radius squared in our programs. But again, this is intended to be handed off to a programmer who is then going to interpret it into their own language. So for example, in a lot of languages, they have specific data types within numbers. So there may not just be one type of number, there may be things like whole numbers or uh, decimal numbers and stuff like that. But by putting number on here it's very general in nature and the programmer is free to do what they need to do as they need to do it. So our processing is actually done as well. So this entire IPO chart is complete. You can see that it's very short, very concise. Now when it's time to actually go and program it, the easiest thing to do is work from left to right, top to bottom. So what I would do is I'd create a variable called radius. I'd create another variable called pi, and since I know the value, I would assign it the value 3.14159. Going over to the next column. For my retrieval of my radius and my circle from the user, if I was working in JavaScript, I would first have to create my text box for radius. I would also have to create my button for submitting. If I was working in another language, say C Sharp, I might have to do a prompt console.writeline and a, then a read, which we're using console.readline. 
And of course, I would need to convert any data brought in because the data brought in is going to be text, and I would need to convert it into the proper number type. So then I go down to the next piece um, to create the variable area, again, which is a number. And then the next piece, calculate the area as pi times radius squared. So I'd have to implement that. Once I'm done that, now I'm on to the next column. You know, so I'm just going left to right, top to bottom. And then I'd finally display the final message. Depending on what language I'm going to be using, that might come out in different forms. That's it. Easy peasy, left to right, top to bottom. And that is our IPO charts.